Hello and welcome. My name is Super Saiyan and this is your weekly news and pre-order video covering all of the new releases from Forgeworld and Games Workshop. I uploaded a video very late last night looking at the swanky new Necron Citadel paints. So I hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a welcome to all of you new subscribers and viewers of the channel. I make daily Warhammer 40,000 content and sometimes I throw in a, a knife video or a motorcycle video. You can support the channel by liking the videos, leaving a comment, subscribing. Uh, but the best way to support this channel right now is by buying all of your goodness from Element Games. Using my affiliate link down below and in the comments, it'll save you 25% of your Warhammer goodness and they ship all around the world. I don't think they ship Games Workshop uh, products uh, to America and a couple of other places. That's mainly because of Games Workshop and their own um, sort of shipping policies, nothing to do with Element Games. But if you want to show your appreciation for these uh, videos and the content that I create, I do have a Patreon, so you can leave a tip for a coffee or something like that. I buy all, my, all of my goodies from Element Games as well. Anyway, I like to start the videos uh, with this uh, look at the Warhammer community website. Um, it's got better and better as times have, have moved on. I like to look at the news from a week ago, so that was the 1st of August. There's quite a few pre-orders uh, up this weekend, which is nice. Um, right here, so... Uh, there was a little look at the Black Library Character Week. Uh, the Sunday preview. I don't think I actually put any pictures up on my Instagram of this. Um, but uh, this weekend we've got the new starter sets uh, dropping. Um, there's three of them. Uh, there's the Recruit Edition, which is a perfect starting point. Um, you get some Assault Intercessors. The Lieutenant. I know. We haven't seen a, lift, a Primaris Lieutenant for absolutely ages. I was beginning to lose all hope. Just can't say that without laughing. Then you've got a, a Necron Destroyer Lord, I think it is, and Necron Warriors, like one of the sprues of the 20 Necron Warriors, uh, and some dice, and one of the double-sided foldable boards. It's cardboard, guys, and uh, it's got lots of, I say, creases in. I really wish Games Workshop would make some more, uh, you know, neoprene battle mats, but um, they're, they're investing in cardboard right now. Then you've got the Elite Edition, which has um, same as before, but but alas, we lose the uh, awesome looking Lieutenant and is replaced with this um, Captain. And you get the three bikes, uh, you get the Scorpec Destroyers, I think. You still get the same Warriors and and you get the Overlord. So actually this time it's got, you know, better HQ choices, arguably better. I mean, the Lieutenant is pretty awesome. And then finally you get the Command Edition, uh, which has Everything that you get in this uh, Elite Edition, nearly said Recruit, um, but you also get uh, some scenery, some proper scenery, rather than um, tipping, <laughs> tipping the box upside down and using that as, uh, as, as scenery. And you also get uh, a shortened rule book. It's not the big full 300 page rule book, um, but yeah, you get a shortened rule book uh, and the scenery for your extra monies. Uh, but you get the same models and these are all the all the models in the indomitus box set so if you were lucky enough to pick that up uh, then you're not going to miss out they are push to fit models so although they've got great detail they're going to be really quick and easy to put together you don't need glue but i would always suggest gluing them uh, however they're all going to look exactly the same you can modify them slightly uh, check out my Assault Intercessor review that's coming soon and uh, you will see just how much I've kind of modified them because nobody wants twins in 40k. Now if you weren't lucky enough to pick up an Indomitus box set please do check out my Indomitus box set giveaway video on the channel. Just leave a comment of which is your favourite model on here and you'll automatically be entered into my giveaway and I'll ship this box set. It's a heavy one, it's going to cost me loads to ship. We're talking like probably $80 or so to ship, um, but I'll ship it around the world for free. That way um, you can get your hands on uh, one of these sets. I wish I could give more guys. I wish I had 10 box sets. Then they've got some nice little paint sets. You even get a pot of uh, Polonium 210. <laughs> no, you don't. Um, just the Tesseract Glow, lovely, lovely uh, technical paint. Um, you also get the new Rune Lord Brass. And that's it. They're the two new paints of the Necrons. 
I think it's a bit poor. I would have liked them to have the other uh, two paints, um, specifically the Canoptech layer paint, and maybe the smaller pot of the gloss. That's the Agrax Earthshade gloss for some reason. Uh, and then in here, yeah, we, we've just had all those paints um, before. Nothing new there. Um, and you get a starter brush, which is, yeah. I'm going to have a look at those um, sets on the web store because it will be a far cry from when I first started a hobby over 20 years ago. And uh, the, the set was £10. And in that £10, you got five Space Marines and a load of paints. I think you also got a brush. And I want to say you got glue. I'd love to go back 20 years ago and look at my unboxing re and review of a, a Space Marine um, starter set. But uh, alas, the internet back then, to load a picture like this, it would take you ages. It would just line by line. And now we all take this speed for granted, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> moving down, you've also got a paints and tools set here. You basically get uh, the two new paints there and then all of the old paints. Um, and some clippers and a mold line remover. Yeah, that'll work all right. I, I still think that it needs a knife. You need a hobby knife, uh, but, uh, but there we go. And then expand your battlefield horizons. There's this set. I did have it in my basket today. I was about to press buy and then I did the maths and things and, and just decided, you know what, it's, it's not really that worth it. But I will be looking at that in this video uh, a little bit closer on. Then uh, we've got the release of uh, the new book, Avenging Sun by Guy Haley. Uh, this is available on paperback, and then this is available in uh, hardback, uh, special edition. It may well have already been sold out. We'll have a look on the, the web, web store. Um, it's a bit odd. I'm really, really pleased that they've released the paperback and like a hardback at the same time. And I'd rather have them do this than like the special edition and a hardback version. Having a softback and a special edition hardback is a massive thumbs up for me. And Games Workshop, uh, that is an amazing decision. And I hope you continue doing this with all of these book releases. I can't say it enough. I really don't like the way they were going by releasing the hardback special edition and then a few months down the line really releasing the hardback edition the normal uh, version and then maybe a couple of months a few months after that finally releasing the paperback that just doesn't make sense all all the hype and the um appetite for a new book a new novel just dies down after that um and people take it from their sort of must buy must pre-order um list and just put it on a on a list of oh well I'll, I'll get that eventually and um, once I've finished my other mountain of uh, 40k novels anyway and um, what you finally oh, this is a clear example right here what you've got here is the first wall uh, by Gav Thorpe I'm reading it I will say that I'm not really enjoying this uh, novel as much as the previous two I'll say that right now I actually preferred the Solar War to The Lost and the Damned, and I thought I would prefer The Lost and the Damned. Guy Haley, I don't know what he did, but I preferred Titan Death. Anyway, I don't want to get into spoilers and things, but I'm really finding it a chore to get through this, this first wall uh, novel, whereas the other two I didn't. Um, I'm hoping that Sons of Selenar, uh, even though it's a smaller uh, book by Graham McNeil, I hope it's bursting with um, quality, and Saturnine, I'm really hoping that Dan Abnett has done a good job and a good use of those 550 trees, no pages, uh, that he's invested in that. I mean, he is one for writing uh, large novels, um, but he is very descriptive and he, he certainly enabled me to paint some absolutely creative and imaginative um, worlds in my own um, brain. Anyway, <laughs> let's, I went off on a bit of tangent then. Um, then we've got uh, Cal Jericho, finally available in uh, softback. Uh, I remember this being being up like last year, I'm sure, in, in a really nice um, uh, shimmery kind of cover. I remember going to Games Workshop November last year and uh, seeing this in hardback and it had already been out for a little while um, back then. Then we've got White Dwarf issue 455 and then a little bit look at the, uh, uh, the Twitch events and things. Um, you've got an article, Come to Papa for the Never Chosen, Road to Thramas Part 7, End of the Road. Um, this is a nice look. The, yes, the Horrors Heresy, believe it or not, is, is still going ahead. It's almost like we've had a year of a break and things from models and stuff. But this is good. I, I really like 
Games Workshop and Warhammer community for posting, you know, the contents of these books and how many pages. I wish they do it. I wish they did it with all of the codexes and books and things that are coming out. I really do. Um, but it's great because it gives you an idea of uh, if, you, if you're into Dark Angels, I'm not. <laughs> but if you're into Dark Angels, this is great because it'll um, give you uh, the little, I say, data sheets and things. You know, you've got Lionel Johnson, you've got Marduk, uh, said. Cedras, uh, you've got Dreadwing Interemptors, um, you've got all kinds of uh, data sheets and things, and also focuses on the Night Lords. So it looks like you get 13, I'd say 14 pages inclusive for Night Lords, and then you get a whopping 17 pages of um, uh, Dark Angels, and you get a load of uh, Army List um, additions, such as uh, the Little Legion Sabre Tank, uh, the Termite Assault Drill, the uh, Bombard, the Radio Dreadnought. So not really one for me. I think I'm going to pass on this one. Even if I had a Aquitor Bombard and a Saber Strike Tank, which I don't, even if I had those two models, I just don't think that this book for me is going to be worth the 80 odd pounds or 85 pounds or whatever it's going to be. It's going to be expensive. Um, so I think I'll be passing this book. Uh, the model for Lionel Johnson is really, really cool though. I can't believe that he's managed to let this Night Lord um, aim a gun at him, let alone get so close to him, you'd, you'd think, you know, uh, but oh well. Um, anyway, he's got this massive sword and then you can have him with a, with a helmet instead. There's a Conrad Kerr's model, it's, it's getting on a bit though, and then you've got uh, some rules and things for them. Um, there is another picture of uh, Lionel Johnson, but he's got this big chainsaw thing and he's got a helmet and that model looks really, really cool. I don't know what I'd go for. I'd probably go for the sword with the helmet if if I was uh, Dark Angels. But there's just something about having helmetless Primarchs, isn't there? Unlucky Alpharius. Anyway, <laughs> we've got inside the Warhammer 40k starter sets right here. So, uh, wow, that's pretty cool. This is nice. Um, so there's a breakdown of what you get. Oh, it's a Royal Warden. Sorry, I think I said it was like a Destroyer Lord or something. Sorry. How to build them. Oh, that's quite cool. Some missions, elite edition. So then it shows you the breakdown there of them. And then the command edition. Yeah, same models. Uh, but you get the little, I say little, it's almost a 200 page rule book. It's quite nice. So there you go. And that's another sort of detailed look at them. Blood Bowl new season sighted. Um, I think there's some new models announced on this uh, community website as well. Rimmer engine, looks like some kind of halberd axe type thing. Uh, community painting competition winner for July. I like the colour of his face. White Dwarf preview, and then mystery models, unmissable prices. <laughs> you mean an unmissable chance to get more money out of your fans for things that they don't know what they're buying. Uh, I was very tempted, I'd, I'd give it that, because uh, sometimes I do like uh, the premise of buying something and sort of having it as a gamble and not knowing what you what you're gonna get. You well, you sort of know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get you know Warhammer models, uh, hopefully. <laughs> um, but uh, I didn't um, bite to this uh, because a part of me is against it, um, especially for such a large amount of money, seventy five pound. I mean, you, you save a whopping fifty percent compared to what you get for the kit separately. Well. You can save 25% from Element Games and you know what you're going to get and you can choose exactly the things you, that you want to purchase. Um, so they had an Imperium supply drop and a Warhammer Underworld supply drop. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if any of the other YouTubers or any, any other hobbyists, you guys, um, put up a video of, of what you've received in it. I'll be very interested to, to see that. And, and also another video um, to see if there's any differences from one supply drop to another. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of like a supply drop, but a supply drop of money for Games Workshop. They were sold out pretty quickly, I have to um, tell you. So uh, even though I'm against it, and I'm assuming uh, quite a few of you in the comments will probably be against something like that, there are enough of you that are for it to have made it sold out. And that's always the case, you know, we. We do complain and we do uh, moan and whinge about certain things in the hobby, uh, but there are still a significant amount of people that are for it. And um, 
yeah, that's just an observation. Anyway, Reader's Choice uh, returns. Turn your friends into Warhammer fans. Yeah, convert them into this uh, this hobby. Hey, you new person. So you just shout at them with capital letters, and uh, yeah, you you basically it's a recruitment article, really. You know, it's even Peachy here is is sort of saying, hey, yeah, well, you know, the spray paints are eighteen pound. What are you gonna do? <laughs> You want to undercoat your models? I can sort you out with a spray paint or two. <laughs> no, I, he's, he's probably not saying that. He's, um, But it's quite an interesting gesture that they, he's got going on there. Anyway, um, I want to meet people. Yeah, set, set in 2020 <laughs> with the COVID and stuff. Yeah, one of the best tactics that they can uh, employ is to um, get people that they don't pay to encourage others to be part of the hobby. And I know that sounds really ironic coming from me. It would sound very ironic if all I did was blow hot air up their backside. But I don't. I'm very critical. And I do call them out on a lot of things. And in this case, I haven't actually been recruited by them to make all these thousands of videos. Um, but this is blatant recruitment right here. If they can get you all to convince your friends and things to to get into the hobby, they will. Time and time again, that's been the big um, drive for, for Games Workshop. That's not speculation. I used to work for Games Workshop, so I know this. It's all about the new hobbyists and about um, getting you into that, that hobby. And I guess that's the same for other um, companies like Apple, you know, getting you into that ecosystem. As another YouTuber I watch recently said, it starts off with a, with a phone and before long, you've got a 4,000 pound iMac that you can iMessage on. So it, it can uh, escalate, you know. You start off with a Space Marine Primaris starter set with three Primaris in, and before you know it, you've bought a Warlord Titan. Well, m maybe not, but it can uh, get, say, out of control. It is possible to get to the sort of higher echelons of um, collecting and, and the hobby in, uh, in a short space of time. It's, it's uh, because there's so many um, incredible looking models now and so much variety in the hobby. So many more paints, so many more scenery, way more than uh, when I first started. And probably if you listen to this and you're a long-term hobbyist, uh, you probably agree. Anyway, I, I am getting off on some tangents today. I do apologize. Uh, you've got uh, a Middle Earth FAQ, new Warhammer 40K terrain, in the command edition but also you can get it separately uh oh and then um the terrain is designed to work sympathetically alongside the sector imperialis they don't give you they then don't elaborate on that they don't build on that and and show you how they just say oh here's some sector imperialis uh scenery they, they don't give you an example of how it um works sympathetically they just copy it they just copy and paste a you know, their generic picture of one of their other products, which is lazy. Anyway, moving on. Uh, while here come the Black Orcs, but these are the Black Orcs. Basically, they're still green, but they've got black armor, so that now contributes them to be black. Yeah, puzzling, but I'm just happy that they've got Orcs in uh, Blood Bowl. Black Orcs are no laughing matter. 40k the app new features update and improvement roadmap easier than ever to subscribe and unsubscribe so is that a, a new new thing week of the 3rd of august so that was the start of this week free version updated updated parallels on all data sheet tweak the 10th New ways coming soon plan your match play armies with battleforge so they don't actually have battleforge yet and then in October, unlock the new Space Marines and Necrons codexes. What? Why? Why October? I mean, if you're paying for this thing, why can't you have it now? Baffles me how they put a paywall up to really decent models in their big box set game sets, like Jane Zar and the new Pound and Banshees and things, and Gazgul, classic example that came out many months ago in that box set, still not available um, singularly. I don't mean to get off on a tangent again, but with the Mechanicus Manipulus, that was over a year until that model was released separately. I can't see why they're not employing that strategy here. Would that annoy you guys if they released the, the codexes and rules earlier on the, on the app? As much as the models, but I think the models would um, 
would annoy me more than the rules coming out early on the on the app. Uh, but it definitely give you more of an incentive to get it. Forge World pre-orders, um, so they've got some more Aeronautica Imperialis in resin. Lovely looking miniatures. We'll have a look at them in, in uh, more detail on Forge World in a moment. Bedtime Stories, Avenging Sun, an interview with Guy Haley. Uh, top bloke, I normally do like his uh, novels. I really like the Titan stuff and the way he writes um, Sanguinius. Um, I've actually... My, version of Titan Death is actually signed by him by the way um, but yeah great guy I'm sure he did a brilliant job with Avenging Sun I will pick it up eventually then you've got 40k starter sets your next steps next steps is the glue you've got the starter sets here paint set muster the reinforcements oh and then here we go keep an eye on the invader ATV the fire strike uh, servo turret and the lock Hust Heavy Destroyer and the Canoptech Doomstalker as they're all coming soon. I wonder if Games Workshop will release all of these four in one week. It would be odd to release Necrons and Space Marine models sort of as one release and two different factions. What's your opinion guys on it? Um, would you prefer dual release so you've got Primaris and Necrons in one week or would you prefer just uh, one faction like either Space Marines or the Necrons? Put it in the comments below. And then uh, terrifying touchdowns uh, from beyond the grave. So you've got some fantasy football little uh, video there, releasing the horrors. And that's it for the news. Quite a lot of news, quite a lot of my uh, ranting and tangents. So um, let's have a look at uh, Forge World and uh, the Aeronautica uh, model. So yes, finally, a uh, second week of pre-orders from um, uh, Forge World. If we just click on new and we go on pre-orders, uh, these are them. Here are these. Uh, you've got the Imperial Navy Arvis Lighters, which is £16 for two, so they're £8 each. They'll look exactly like their, their bigger um, brothers and things. Then we've got the Astra Militarum Vulture Gunships with Punisher Cannons. Interesting. Uh, £30, so £15 each. They are bigger than the um, Arvis Lighters, though. I do have a Vulture Gunship um, with... Uh, I think it's got Hellstrike missiles, six Hellstrike missiles, quite a lot actually. Um, but it looks really cool with the Punisher um, cannons. Um, really, really nice. So yeah, if you're into Aeronautica, you can get both of those kits there. Um, it's nice that Forge World are supporting um, Games Workshop's box games. I kind of expected that they would uh, ever since kind of Blood Bowl and Necromunda. Um, they're now supporting Adeptus Titanicus and uh, Aeronautica and Hobbit as well. They've been supporting Hobbit for, for ages, uh, absolutely ages, or Middle Earth as it's called. Um, not so much on the Age of Sigma though. I wish they'd pulled a finger out and, and create some new models for Age of Sigma. Other than an absolutely awesome looking Chaos Dragon. But still, <laughs> let's move on over to Games Workshop web store and have a look at all of these new starter sets and things. So, yep, they're the two adverts. You've got the starter sets and the knights from uh, last weekend. Um, my review of them is coming soon. In fact, it is due for release on Monday. So come back to the channel right here on Monday and you can see these and I will be uh, doing a size comparison with uh, all of the other Adeptus Titanicus uh, Titans and models that are in the range. So that'd be an interesting uh, review for you. It's gonna actually gonna be my first uh, Titanicus um, model review. So these starter sets then, let's uh, jump on over to new and exclusive, uh, click on pre-orders, go view all, high to low, and here are all the pre-orders. So you've still got the Horus Lepercle bookends, you can still buy them, they're £70, but they were up last weekend. And then you've got the uh, Warhammer 40,000 Command Edition. So um, this is your starter set. This is the Dark Imperium replacement. The caveat being you get a board which doesn't look massive. You know, it's not 48, it's not um, 6x4 by any means or anything like that. And you do get um, a load of scenery. Now the scenery is essentially worth £40 in this. So you're paying £65 there for um, the £15 mat. And then you're paying £50 for the miniatures and half of the, the, the rule book. Uh, still worth it you're still saving a bit of money and um, I'd still would uh, pick this up if you weren't able to get Indomitus 
it just depends on how much you value that that scenery in in the box um but it technically does give you everything that you need um to start games of uh, 40k in the ninth edition and um you know if you've got a mate that's interested this is a really good set it's got all the the new miniatures um new scenery new uh, gaming boards it's up to you if you want to use these range ruler things at 12 inches the tachyon arrow that the overlord has got is a 120 inches range anyway so if you're if you're going to be playing on this um gaming board then it's it's always going to hit anywhere um so you don't necessarily need a tape measure but you might want to swap out and both get yourself a tape measure um, but this is perfectly surfaceable as a starter set and 105 pounds it would have been awesome if it was like 75 pound or 80 but it's past the 100 pound mark now and i can see why they've uh, put some scenery and a board in because it gives you the full experience really Anyway, moving down, you've got the next edition. So we've got the Command Edition and then the Elite Edition, which is, uh, you know, turns your scenery uh, from actual physical scenery to, uh, you know, the underside of the box um, sort of tipped upside down. And this kind of, yeah, what else can they do with that really, other than have it as some kind of bunker? And it's got all the miniatures that you get in the uh, Command Edition. So that's £65. Pretty much you're paying £65 for the £15 mat. Um, so it's £50 for those miniatures, which, yeah, works out the same as uh, in the Command Edition. And then the Command Edition Battlefield Expansion set, £55 here. I did have it in my basket, but uh, I uh, went against it. Um, one of the reasons is because it only comes with one board. If it was £55 with two of the boards, I know this is reversible, by the way, but if they had both of the boards in there with the scenery, then I would have I would have gone for it. Uh, but what you're basically paying for is fifteen pound for the uh, reversible, foldable um, board. If you look at it, it's actually got a fair amount of detail. Um, you know, detail in in the individual sort of sections of the pipes. I don't know what Games Workshop's uh, fascination is with laying pipe, but um, yeah, you've got this furnace type thing. You got the walls. It's very reminiscent of of the you know the color scheme that they've done. The, reminiscent of the um, little scenery that you got in the in the starter set in like third edition. This is what it reminds me. And I wonder if game if that was Games Workshop's intention because I haven't really seen much scenery from them painted in this color. Um, it's really nice color that they've used for it. But again, just uh, you know a lot of pipe. But yeah, fifty five pound. I was going to get it. If you think I should still pre-order it, guys, and you'd like to see a first look of it next weekend on Saturday, put it in the comments and like the video. And if I get 100 likes, then I will go out and get it and uh, give you a first look at it all. Then we've got Dawn of Fire Avenging Sun, 45. I was expecting this to be 50, so that's not too bad. Um, it's no longer available, of course. Um, there's only 2,000. So they've made a nice cushy ninety thousand pound in one one morning, um, but they could have made one hundred eighty thousand pound. I'm sure. I'm sure they could have uh, produced double. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, it's not available anymore. Um, you turn the first page, and you've got the uh, the artwork from the paperback edition. It looks quite chunky, actually. Doesn't tell you how many pages, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, good old Amazon um, disclosed that uh, it has two hundred and forty eight pages. I really like the look of it, especially his spine. Uh, and the gold uh, pages. What does it actually say? Hardback leather effect. So it's not leather, it's just leather effect. Includes a ribbon bookmark, uh, full color page artwork, foil blocking on cover. Uh, individually signed by author Guy Haley, limited to 2,000 copies. Um, that's nice that it's signed by Guy Haley. That's, that's really, really cool. I mean, man, his hand must hurt after signing um, 2,000 copies. I mean, my hand hurts after writing a birthday card, let alone, let alone 2,000. Uh, let's just hope he's been uh, isolating throughout all this, otherwise he's going to turn into a, uh, a super spreader. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got the Recruit Edition for £32.50. So you finally got this model. We've all been waiting for this. It's called, I'm just looking at my notes, Primaris Lieutenant. Yeah, really, really nice model. Uh, so he's got this Neo Volkite um, pistol, a, a better weapon than the uh, Captain. Um, yeah, he doesn't have a Relic Shield, whoop-de-doo, but he does have a, his, his Storm Shield. And you get these Assault Intercessors. Um, 
two, and you get uh, your Necron uh, Warriors with the Scarabs, and uh, yeah, nice little kit that. Really worth it, actually. Uh, this is the same as the Dark Imperium set, the, the, you know, the first strike set. I uh, purchased that. I don't know whether I got, a, I think I got a map. I can't remember. Um, but if you think that the Primaris Lieutenant would be £20 minimum, essentially for £12.50, you're getting uh, the Intercessors, 10 Warriors, which are basically multi-part kits, those ones, and the, um, Royal, and the Royal Warden as well, which is a kind of like a... Yeah, Necron Lieutenant, I guess. Um, and you've got both of them battling it out uh, on the front there as well. So that's quite decent. That's probably one of the, the best picks, best buys. If you just want to get into um, 40k, I would recommend that. Um, I can't recommend that enough. Then you've got the uh, Art of Warhammer 40k. That actually was up for pre-order, I think, uh, last weekend or the weekend before. Uh, this is the paints and tool sets, £27.50. If you're basing each paint as a minimum of £3.70, that's already £48. So you're saving £21, uh, not including the um, fact that they've got a couple of technical paints in there. The clippers and, and a brush. Um, I mean, the brush is probably pence to make and the um, clippers are probably like a pound or two maybe to make but um, you get where I'm coming from that's a nice set to start you off but as a veteran hobbyist uh, I feel like there are a couple of paints missing in that set um, to get the most out of your uh, new minis um, and these are the paint sets £22.50 holy moly I can't remember how many paints the uh, original Space Marine paint set had I want to say more than this. I know it had five miniatures, but technically you're getting more because Incessors have two wounds each, so that's six. Uh, and they are bigger and they've got a lot more detail. They're way better. Don't even look at the old <laughs> Space Marine um, minis that you got with the paint set. That will ju They'll just give you nightmares. Okay, then you've got the uh, Warriors paint sets. These are a bit more, I'm a bit more dumbfounded why you only get three in here. Um, you should really get five, I think. Um, so that's a bit poor. You've got the anthology hardback. I enjoyed these short stories that's uh, packed full of um, Primark short stories from all the different Horace Heresy authors. Uh, I think £15 is overpriced though. Um, I'd probably price it at 10 or 12. Um, it looks thick there, but I can tell you it's not. Um, it really isn't. Uh, they don't tell you how many pages, of course, but that's why it's my job to do that. And I will tell you right now, it consists of 182 pages um, and the page quality just isn't very good at all. It's, I want to say worse than the Indomitus page quality. It's probably about the same. It's not what you'd expect at all from, um, you know, the other Horace Heresy uh, novels and, and things. And it doesn't have any artwork or anything like that. Uh, the stories are good couple of memorable but overall you can skip it and not miss out anything uh, on this one moving down we've got the first wall in paperback 13 pounds why it should be eight or nine pounds i think they're really pushing it now uh you know the hardback books were originally like 14 15 pound and and now we've got paperbacks at uh, almost 13 doesn't say whether you've got any artwork and things in there. I guess it's just the novel and you don't get anything else. As I said at the start, I'm finding it a bit of a struggle to get through that one. Uh, the bookmark's not available. And then a few of these other things have been up uh, last weekend, but you've got Cal Jericho in paperback, 899. They don't tell you how many pages it is again, but it is a, but it is quite a thick one. It's uh, 368 pages, so it's pretty decent. But yeah, if you're into Bounty Hunters and Necromunda, then yeah, it's, it's a go-to book. Uh, and then you've got Avenging Sun, paperback, eight ninety nine, uh, but it's uh, you know over a hundred pages less than Cal Jericho's novel at uh, two hundred forty eight. I think I already said that with the um, collector's edition. So there you go, an absolute ton of pre-orders this weekend. You've got the three different starter sets. You've got the uh, Command Edition Battlefield Expansion set. You've got the Dawn of Fire new novel part one i'm guessing you've got the little paint sets and the individual paint set and you've got a few novels as well quite a nice uh rounded release and uh it's come quite quickly after uh indomitus so all of you guys that weren't able to pick it up you've now got uh, an option of picking up some of the models in that set with the starter sets 
and they are really, really nice models. Uh, I've been enjoying them so far. And you'll be able to see all of the reviews of the models with their rules and things uh, on this channel soon. What do you guys think of uh, this weekend's pre-orders? Uh, please do put it in the comments below as always. What have you pre-ordered uh, this weekend? It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.